sheep without a shepherd. Truth is, I was born to be nothing more than a footnote in somebody else's memoir. All my life, likes, I was forever being told what to think, how to feel, persuaded to be something I was never meant to be. You see, I come from a corner of Edinburgh called Leith, a place that wasn't known for its vibrant art scene or welcoming personality. Instead, its moment in the spotlight came for the exploits of its skag boys and high levels of social deprivation. My name's Stephen Scott, by the way. I'm 30 year old and I've had more dreams than opportunities. Mere kicks in the boys for life than I care to remember, too. My minutes and hours on this planet were programmed to be spent in some soul-destroying call centre for a pittance on minimum wage. Or break my back on some miserable building site. Hopeless endeavours to ensure that folk like me never get too far above our station. My dad was not much of a reader, eh? No unless you couldn't the horse racing section in the Daily Record, that is. Although neither was he a dafty. He could rhyme off the Hibs title winning team for 52 without pausing for breath. And he also had a detailed knowledge of the good old days here in Leith. He would often tell me stories about sailors descending on the port for the four corners of the planet, bringing with them apples for New Zealand or timber for old Uncle Sam. My mum would just brush off his tales and no pay them much attention. But the yin thing about my father was, he was a right good storyteller. And unlike my mum, I found myself itching to hear many of them. Probably due to the fact that the leith he was talking about was a far cry for the hookers and druggies I kent it for. When my father was a young man, back when he was about ages with me now, he worked down at the world famous Henry Robb shipyard, something I could tell he looked back on with fondness. By the way, his puss would beam as he shared stories about the place. This was a leith institution back in the day, eh? And it gave folk here something my generation never had or would even recognise within themselves. An identity. But then that hard-nosed bitch Thatcher came along with her crusade against the working classes. And all of a sudden, boys like my father, who had grafted all their days without complaint, and who had never taken a handout for the government in their puffs, were shamefully directed straight to the back of the dole queue. The shipyard closed in 84 likes. After, my dad and his mates marched for the gates, all the way across to the old state cinema on Great Junction Street, a revolt which ultimately failed as a final stand against the establishment. I can remember vividly, eh, as he showed me pictures of his younger self holding up a sign which read, Then he bring back the thirties. The painful truth was, the thirties had already arrived in the form of Thatcher and an annoying smug puss. She was one of the few people to ever walk this earth who, with just the mere mention of her name, would transform a mild manner feather into resembling some bloodthirsty football casual come Derby Day at Easter Road. Him and all his workmates who worked alongside at the shipyard were proper men. Men who demanded respect. And by that, I'm no meaning they all had some natural ability to throw fists or that, but they encapsulated honest, hard graft. And more importantly, they got pleasure for taking great pride in the job they did. A feeling that was alien to most of the boys and lasses that I had grew up with. The bond that my dad and his mates shared even after the Henry Robb had become a distant memory. Almost made it feel as if they were part of brotherhood. Whereas, the closest I got to experiencing anything like that was when I got inducted into the Leith Young team. There's only so many tins of Heinz baked beans you can scan at a busy checkout as up before you start asking the forbidden question. What's it all about? What's life about? My dad was a wise man, and he always hammered home to me for a young age that the true measure of a boy's toughness is what he's willing to do to provide for his family. Looking back, I think this was his way of preparing me for what life might have in store for me later down the road. He can't for personal experience that life itself is the biggest challenge you'll face. And you have to be willing to make sacrifices if you're going to go the distance. He was in the vanguard when Thatcher decided to cut off the boys of this area. Her name voiced in the presence of my dad would send him into a sudden uncontrollable burst of Tourette's. And the sort of language to spill for his mouth would make even a green berry blush. A sour taste of hatred would fill the air when he spoke about her and how the marks she left on folk are still felt to this day. 
something I never gave much thought to at the time because I was just a bear myself. Yin thing, it did leave me a wee bit awestruck at the time, was the fact Thatcher managed to bridge the divide between Leith and Gorgie. It didn't seem to matter whether you represented the green or maroon side of the capital. She was universally detested by everybody and these people became as yin through their shared hatred there. I grew up despising her too because it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Even though I never fully appreciated why because I was still a young blood myself. All that mattered to me was her name turned my peace-loving feather into a merciless vigilante. In the back of my mind I thought she must be the Antichrist reincarnated or something. At school I remember seeing a picture of her for the first time. There it was, eh? Expecting to be presented with some three-headed fire-breathing demon. Instead I was faced with a doer-faced old hag who looked as if she belonged on a broomstick instead of a podium. In a strange sort of way I did envy that older generation. It wasn't that they ever had much likes, but at least they were in it together. They got to experience something that in some small way resembled an identity. They had a ready-made career waiting for them in the form of the industries that used to serve the heartbeat of the city. It was theirs, and at least it was theirs to lose in the first place. Whether you went to graft on the shipyards or doing the pits, it gave you a lifelong sense of camaraderie. Thatcher took that birth right away to future generations. And she chose to offer us the mind fuck it all mind fucks when she left us to figure out her purpose on this earth. Try and answer that question in a 15 minute interview at the careers office. And by the time you do finally rack your brains and come up with an answer, you're 65 and your best years are well behind you. Something Thatcher did for the better, even if it was unintentional, was that she set future working class Scots free for the outdated brainwash mentality that somehow being British actually meant something. From my father's generation's rage against the machine, eh? Most of them seemed proud to be British. But the moment she started shutting down the British industries was the day being Scottish started to mean something again. Though there's no doubt Thatcher did cast a dark shadow across the working class landscape, along with the explosion of cheap smack for Pakistan which gave birth to the transporting generation. A bunch of lost sheep waiting for a shepherd to guide us through the light and into the darkness. As the drugs started to set into the communities and began to pollute the minds of the youth of the abandoned working classes, some of my mates chose a life of forever chasing that first high, becoming blinded by a world of petty crime. Most of them were too busy chasing the dragon, eh? Instead of a brighter tomorrow. And who could blame them, likes? After all, being high was the only way to numb the bitter pain of reality, kenning that we're nothing more than an afterthought of a bygone era. We are the wonders on this planet, from the Great Pyramids of Giza to the Colosseum in Rome. All we get to admire is the dreary looking violated Lego sets the government put up to keep us contained in. So, when they spike up, Ken, they do so with the purpose of forgetting that the system wants to keep us humble. Sure, the lads and lasses from my way could see places further than the number 30 yin bus could take us to. But only if you're willing to die for queen and capitalism. Here's a rifle, son. Go out and shoot guns. Some of us wants more than to be a soldier of fortune in somebody else's war. Or to spend our miserable existence sitting behind a desk punching in somebody else's cloak. All until our time comes to an end and we're left wondering how it all went so wrong. My parents, though. Well, they kept faith in the system, likes. They did exactly as they were dealt. Paid their taxes and obeyed the laws. Rules which were designed to keep them down. And at the end of it all, I had to watch my dad slip away with lung cancer. And then I had to sit and watch my mum go cap in hand to the social. Only to be presented with 20 quid as if it was the golden ticket for Willy Wonka himself. And it wasn't long after that that I had my heart broken again. When my mum passed away with cardiac arrest. At least, that's what the doctor tells us. But I knew the real diagnosis was that she died of a broken heart. There was no grand monuments with their names on it. Or even a park bench to remember them by, there was only me. In the end though, what to find their years on this planet was a piece of paper to say when they arrived and when they departed. That's their working class autobiography. Realising this changed my outlook on life. 
And now that the blinkers were removed, I could finally see the hazy road ahead clearly for the first time. And I was now ready to become a somebody. See, I figured out what gave the elite their power, eh? It wasn't their lands or titles, it was their education. My weapon of choice wasn't a rifle or a chisel, it was a library card. It suddenly dawned on me that education is indeed power. And there's nothing more dangerous in this country than a working man with a library card who isn't afraid to use it. So, that's the adventure I embarked on. I began spending more and more time in the library with my head stuck inside books. And the more I would read, the more I started to become a reflection in my oppressor. An imitator, if you will. And all the new words I learnt were fast becoming a foreign language to my mates. Go to the point where my ambitions started to be recognised as an act of class treason. Those who sit on the throne of power didn't want the likes of us thinking about or questioning the world around us. Instead, they want mindless drones sitting about scratching their boys in the hope the lot will get us away out of poverty. The last thing they want is us creating our own pathway across the minefields of life. But that's exactly what I plan today. Through the rather contagious power which is education. Because simply sitting back and idling our breaths away the hope things might get better merely confirms the establishment's perception of us. You just need to look at the land I come from to tell you there's no future without action. A land so beautiful that it looks as if it's been conceived by the mind of Michelangelo. Yet there's five million voices and they cunt can hear us. Somebody ain't said that it's shite being Scottish but I honestly didn't think that. It's no shite. It's just awfully fucking depressing. But, the good news is that here I am, with a very end piece of paper. But it's not just yin that states my time on this planet, or that I died an honourable death fighting for a square foot of sand in the name of Queen or Country. Instead, it's yin that announces I'm on my way to finally becoming a somebody. Mr Scott, it says, We are delighted to inform you that you have an unconditional offer to study BSc ONS Public Sociology at Queen Margaret University in Musselburgh. Just imagine some dafty called Charles with all his private education and personal tutors thinking he's the smartest cunt in the room, only to find a humble boy for Leith wanting to show him the truth. That you didn't need to descend for the spunky some lord in order to possess an intellect, and that all you need is a library card and a relentless thirst for knowledge. Listen, who the fuck cares, eh? I might end being an advisor to Nicola Sturgeon. Come to think of it, I might even end up run the hail show myself. What I do ken for sure though, eh? The world really is my oyster.